Hey guys, what's up? Haru, now I know that Netland may look like it's a bunch of dragons and some monster hunter slash catching simulation with a mix of tournament art cliches, but there's actually a deeper and more sinister aspect of Netland's cultures, origins, and even their form of rule. I mean, I don't exactly think that Mavuika is the Archon just yet, and nor is that fire in the middle of the dark room gonna be a dragon only. I mean, have you ever heard of the Night Kingdom, the Ineffable City, or the possibility of the Primal Fire being so hot that it needs to be sealed away? Which could explain why it's in here. Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss those places and concepts that don't seem to be from Natlan at all, along with some other details regarding why dragons and humans are coexisting in Natlan only compared to other regions, and the possibility of just one Archon that personifies life, death, and rebirth, as well as war and change of Natlan. Honestly, I was supposed to make a Simulanka video, but seeing as there's more than just the surface, lore, and theory, I'm gonna have to let that cook a little more. So timestamps of course will be down below for your specific Natland needs. Now, let's get started. If you're not familiar with lore or don't really bother reading the drip marketing posts of every new character, then you're likely missing out on some juicy pre-release lore which is the closest that us lore nerds can actually get to leaks. Now, the Night Kingdom is a vague place that was mentioned in Kenichi's drip marketing post, a place where aberrants of the night would return to, and it was interestingly paired with his titles, namely the Night Hunter and Flamebearer, and even a specific event called the Turn Fire Night. With Kenichi's job as a sort of bounty hunter paired with his designation of hunting aberrants from the Night Kingdom, then I'd say this is similar to the events of Enkanomiya or the Chasm hunting or fending off baptismal bishops during Enkanomiya's Dark Ages, or that one time where the Millilith led a battle into the chasm filled with abyssal monsters. When it comes to Mesoamerican and African relations, it's more about the transition to night than the actual night itself, like solar eclipses which block the sun and cover the land in darkness. Both Umbra and Penumbra, which are two levels of darkness caused by eclipses, were experienced by Mesoamerican and African people. Archons forbid if you end up here and not live in the 18th century because solar eclipses symbolizes the transition of eras, the anger and the war of gods, as well as symbols of death and rebirth. And all of this plays perfectly well into the current lore that we have about Natlan. As for the location of this Night Kingdom and how we'll get to see it, it's likely similar to many fallen kingdoms of bygone eras within the game. The Caribbean, Gurabad, and Remoria to name a few. But if you're familiar with the lore of the Nartes and Kreutz, then it could also possibly be the root cycle that's been studied in Fontaine's Nartes and Kreutz Ordo called Natlantian. Now if this relates to the historical dragons or the current Saurians of Natlan, we can assume that this place is the Night Kingdom. Not because it's the darkest place in the teaser, but because it's the only place where fire can be seen burning. A concept that I think is lacking in Natlan for now compared to Fontaine's Flood Prophecy. Movika also mentions this which highlights how bright fire can be when in the darkest of nights. Time to burn again! Even the tiniest of sparks will not go unnoticed. Now seeing this, there's close to nothing that we know about the Night Kingdom. It does open up several intriguing possibilities for Natlan as well as the Vat's future lore. I mean, could this place be an ancient and hidden realm filled with powerful beings and forgotten secrets? Kenichi's titles, as well as him being called Undying by the very dragon lord himself, Kuhul Ajao, suggests a deep rooted history that could reveal more about Natlan's past and its friendship with dragons. Moreover, the idea of aberrants and aberrations, as well as deviants that come out from the Night Kingdom into Natlan, hints at an ongoing conflict or battle that the people of Natlan are always faced against. Natlan is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. On top of dragons and the unending war, transition, death, and rebirth of Natland secrets, there's also the idea of a primordial flame, which we often relate to the Mare Jivari, a place of unending flames, lava, and ash where journeys would end. But maybe the primordial flame or primal fire isn't a place but a single ball of flame. One that cannot be put out no matter how dark, how little oxygen, and how much water is doused onto it. This, I think, fits something so prevalent as a fire that the Pyro Dragon would be taking care of, similar to the Primordial Sea that the Hydro Dragon is in charge of. If it's a place full of flames and fire, then it might as well just be another volcano or a very powerful one. 
But what if the primal fire is a searing hot ball of flame that burns everything in its vicinity, charring everything around it black and creating a place of darkness with nothing but that fire itself? It would make sense with the large gate as well as the stone floors and darkened room where Mabwika goes to at the end of the teaser. And if a fire is so hot that it could burn everything black, then maybe only someone equally powerful can withstand such flames. If such an unquenchable and powerful flame was left to spread, then it would also leave an entire area dark and black with smoke and deadly flames. Quite similar to the events of the talking stick. But instead of it being the abyss, maybe it's a spreading primal flame that's too powerful and hot that it can't be put out at all. The ineffable city mentioned in the Unfinished Reverie might be referring to the first city that was made during the time humanity first conquered the dragons. Dragons used to rule this world until the Primordial One came, defeating the dragons, then creating humanity and its forms of life. Interestingly, the ineffable city during this time sealed away or had captured Saurians, or at least THE Saurian, air quotes. Looking at this from a timeline perspective, then the only possible point that Saurians could have been caged or captured is right after the dragons were defeated, making the ineffable city possibly part of or actually the ancient civilization created by the Primordial One and the Shades long ago. The word ineffable means to be so beautiful or intricately designed that it can't be described. And who else could create such ineffable things, places, and even creatures than the god itself who came from outside of Tevat? I mean, just look at Celestia. Not only does it have flying creatures resembling dragons in the Genshin manga, the tower in the middle is also indescribable and almost seems too technologically advanced for the people of Tevat to understand. Because we've seen five regions already and three of them have had two or maybe even three Archons, then we can expect a similar plot in Natlan. But what I think here is that we'll get to see the same Archon twice. Once after she dies and then another when she is revived. Or if we follow Kachina's drip marketing, the past death and the now revival of the Pyro Sovereign. See, there's a certain pilgrimage in Natland that was mentioned in Kachina's drip marketing post called the Pilgrimage of the Return of the Sacred Flame. If there's a set of trials and challenges or a pilgrimage that needs to be done in order for the Sacred Flame to return, then it's likely going to be part of the Archon quest or just Kachina's story quest. Since I'm quite a fan of Himiko in every universe and haven't seen her trademark just yet, there might be a small chance that Mavika is a sort of retainer or acting Archon of Natlan. And it's more likely since much of Natlan's recent lore hasn't mentioned anything about their Archon at all, and nor do they want to participate in the auspicious events that's highlighted by their own region's designated element. And neither have we seen the Gritch Balanke sealed in Primal Fire yet. Someone who is similar to Nouvellette in the Overture teaser should have at least been mentioned in Natlan's Ignition teaser. If you haven't noticed yet, this scene shows a red bird approaching Capitano and then transitioning to Mavuika. Now this could mean that Mavuika is either a phoenix or has phoenix familiars as her Saurian companion. This not only makes possible references to the bird of Mer Jivari, but also the possible kit of Mavuika. Now, within the Lava Walker artifact set, a phoenix is said to be dwelling and flapping its wings in the flames and ashes of Mer Jivari, as well as singing its songs and meeting the Lava Walker. Now, I've made a video on what sort of kit and design the Pyro Archon might have based on previous current lore, and it seems like we'll be getting a death and rebirth kit, either losing characters first and then reviving to obtain some powerful buffs, or if we follow a certain Pyro healer theorized to be from Natlan, Bennett, a very powerful healer buffer with revival abilities. Quite the power creep, I know. Constantly on fire or using up HP and reviving completely into a new form or move set. This would fit with Fontaine's life drain characters and maybe even the bond of life mechanics of Fontaine's weapons. Now, Mavika's potential connection to the Phoenix and themes of death and rebirth could add a unique dynamic to Natlan's lore as well. Her abilities might introduce new gameplay mechanics centered around revival and transformation, which should be a pretty good fit considering Natlan has a lot of Saurians. Moreover, her role in society might also reveal more about Natlan's culture and spiritual and traditional beliefs, emphasizing the importance of pyro element itself as well as regeneration and transition from different eras. 
Everyone's already expecting that Nedland is going to get more dragon lore as it is the nation of dragons. But we may also get info on the creation of humanity, the first impact of the primordial one, the first god's impact, as well as what happened after the war with the dragons. Not just another lore story like before the sun and moon or the artifact sets of Natlan, but probably even more detailed and first-hand telling from the dragons themselves. Something that I think should have been disclosed further by Nduvalet in his character quest. But we of course have his past thoughts and possible interactions with the Dragon King, Nibelung, in his character lore stories. To Nuvolet, dragons and humans might have had a better chance of defeating the Abyss if they worked together instead of facing it on their own. Based on how Natland seems to be dealing with their own instance of the Abyss, possibly the Night Kingdom, then maybe Natland has everything under control already. Maybe they've made dealing with the Abyss a form of sport rather than an enemy that needs to be felled. Heck, maybe they even made friends with the Abyss. But if the Pyro Sovereign of the Primal Fire is found in the Night Kingdom or in the deepest depths of Natlan, which could likely be seen here with Mavuika, then we'll be in for quite a twist as to why the Dragon of Pyro is sealed away in such a dark and eerie place. Just be sure to brace yourself if the people of Natlan get along with their Saurians quite differently. Ranjit's strategy, if you could remember, likely stemmed from his friends in Natlan and we don't really know who his friends in Natlan were either. This exploration of the lore of dragons as well as the origin of humans could deepen our understanding of the region's history as well as some connections to the broader aspects of the world. Knowing about the first god's impact on the world might reveal crucial information about the origins of life and the cosmic balance of Tibet, of which is often referenced to the Hexen Circle. Additionally, the potential for Natland to treat dealing with the Abyss as a form of sport rather than a dire threat suggests a very unique and interesting culture perspective, highlighting the true essence of war that Natlan might have. Natlan is honestly seeming like the most conflicted region of all the regions to me. I mean, it still fits well with Natlan since conflict can also mean war, and Natlan is a nation of war. But this region seems to embrace conflict more than just a glorious battle, but rather a way of life that continues on from era to era, whereby despite its seemingly more advanced nature, holds true to the oldest traditions and roots from where they were first founded. Compared to the past five regions where the concept of their archons as well as their rule changes or is more freely described as their people do. The concepts of freedom, the autonomy of contracts, the definition of eternity as well as the meaning of knowledge and justice. All of these concepts change depending on the Archon's interaction with humanity. But that's enough theory for now, we'll talk about the concept of change in Natlan in a different video. So I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like and if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!